Less than 24 hours after he was hit with a gag order in his upcoming hush money trial, Trump has repeatedly lashed out again at the judge overseeing the case. On True Social yesterday, Trump called the judge biased and conflicted. He also criticized the judge's daughter, saying she used an image of him behind bars as a social media profile picture, but that claim is false. The New York state court system says the account is bogus. Under the gag order imposed this week, Trump must refrain, refrain from discussing witnesses, jurors, lawyers, court staff, and employees in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. The order did not mention the judge and his family. So George Conway technically not a violation of the gag order because he's going after the judge, not witnesses, potential jurors. But Donald Trump continues down this road to no one's surprise, lying about a fake Twitter account that he thinks he saw. Yep, lying, uh, intimidating, bullying. That's that's Donald Trump at his worst, and that's Donald Trump always. And he's always going to find the one thing that he can do if there's a list of things that he cannot do and that he doesn't think he can get away with. And there's he has no compunction about it. He has no conscience. And at some point, I think, though, he can't help himself. He's going to end up violating the gag order. And that's going to be an interesting, an interesting moment. I mean, he's arguably already violated some other gag orders. But we'll, we're going to see him pushing the envelope as much as as possible, particularly when he actually gets into that courtroom on April 15th and has to sit there and listen to all the evidence against him and listen to the arguments against him. Yeah, you know, Jonathan Lemire, you know, we, we, we've been talking a lot about all the money that Donald Trump is going to have to pay. You look at look at how much of it is self-inflicted, about 90 million dollars of that is self-inflicted with E. Jean Carroll. That case was over. And he just started defaming her again. You know, so he the, the case is over. He pays, I don't know, five, ten million dollars. There's a lot of money for other people, but Trump would say not for himself. And then he ignores everything, starts defaming her again, <laughs> repeatedly. And this time the court comes back and they make a decision. I think the jury made a decision. We've got to do something to stop him from defaming this woman, because you would think a five or ten million dollar verdict would be enough. But no, it wasn't. And so, so much of this whining, I mean, as is always the case with Donald Trump, so much of his mo problems are self-inflicted problems. And here we go again. So I don't want to hear people say, oh, well, if, if he ends up going to jail for a couple of nights for, 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 for violating this order, you know, it's on Donald Trump. It's on him. The, 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 the rest of us. All 340 million Americans would not get away with what Donald Trump get away. Mark that down. 340 no million of us would not get away with trashing a judge. Not even close. And and lying about the judge's daughter. I I I. For all the complaining. I practiced law for a few a few years, and I practiced law long enough to know that if you did something like this in Northwest Florida you would be sent to jail for a night or two to think about it. Yeah, it is a two-tiered system of justice, but Donald Trump's got the advantage, unlike what is what he always says. And we should be clear, this gag order is largely because of worries about threats of violence. Uh, there are many people attached to this. This trial and others have received threats from Trump supporters. This is an effort here to try to tamp that down, to try to get Trump to stay quiet. Um, you know, but he, he can't help himself. As you just chronicled, uh, he has gotten himself in so much trouble because he simply can't stop talking or truthing on his uh, social media site. Uh, and Rev, and that's sort of what, first of all, that's going to have implications for his criminal trial. And I think we've been living with this for so long now that Trump is in legal trouble. It's still going to be jarring when he actually, as a former president, the first former president, to sit in a courtroom in about a month's time and face criminal charges. Uh, but it also, that's the political problem for Trump. It's that he can't stop talking. Famously, he was disciplined for like the last two weeks of the 2016 campaign. And that did help him as he came back and to beat Hillary Clinton. But the Biden campaign, they firmly believe the more Trump talks, the more he gets himself in trouble, legally and politically, the better it is for the president. No, and I think they're right. I think that Trump uh, will continue talking and they will continue the uh, Biden and Democrats uh, to benefit from it uh, because he appears unhinged to the voters. But I think you must realize that Donald Trump wants to provoke a confrontation. He wants to play martyr, and he wants them to uh, answer him, come down on him, so he can play to his base 
see what they're doing to me. Not that he's provoked it. I mean, to attack a judge's daughter and a judge who just said, don't do these kinds of things. And, and as you rightfully say, with violence being threatened, I mean, we're not doing this to stop free speech. We're doing this because people are being threatened and potential jurors will be concerned. I think it shows the irresponsibility uh, of someone that you would want to put back in the, uh, behind the chair in the Oval Office. It's absolutely, uh, to me, frightening. Well, George Conway and Molly, George, you first. I mean, I think, first of all, uh, the reason for these gag orders, as uh, Jonathan Lemire pointed out, is because of the fear of violence, uh, of retribution. Um, and, and Donald Trump uh, is proven on that point in many different ways. We could talk for four hours about all the different ways he has threatened people. And then, of course, we have January 6th. And I just have to say, I was watching one of his networks because I like to see what Trump voters are hearing from places that call themselves news networks. And they were talking about January 6th in a discussion, in a discourse about us, actually, and saying that we want to put out there that January 6th was more than just a little thing. And that is the problem I, I, with I, the discourse. Let's just come out and say it. <laughs> you, hear on, you can hear on Fox News people saying that nothing was wrong with you January can, 6th have some, for the most part. Yeah, if someone it, believes it, wasn't a it big was a little deal. thing. And, and others saying, about. you know, that network, they, they actually sit there. And people that watch that network actually think January 6th was an important event. And you're, you're sitting there, wait a second. It, were there not more seen, than a little Were thing. there Nazi newspapers in 19... <laughs> in the 1930s saying, you know, Crystal Knox, there are some people who actually think that was a bad thing. This is the fact that Donald Trump has numbed people so much that the same people who said it was a horrible thing on January the 7th are now coming back into the cult, back into the folds going, you know, some people actually are stupid enough to say that that was a really terrible thing. Mind blowing to me. Mind blowing to me. That, that can't that, be the that, debate. That, that they actually uh, are are able to say that uh, on a network that's paid dearly for election lies. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. I mean, they've created their own little bubble. It's a little bubble that Trump lives in and that all of the people who, a lot of the people who support him live in. But the question is, uh, what what do the people in the middle think? And, and the people in the middle don't want that chaos. They don't really want that chaos. They're not thinking about Donald Trump quite yet as much as all of us do because they're not it's it's only it's only march and so i think that you know the strategy that the biden campaign has which is going to be to keep pounding on him and keep pointing out the crazy keep pointing out the abnormal in donald trump is the right one because it's going to actually have as i as i like to say kind of a a feedback effect the more you pound on him and they have the the resources and it seems like they have the idea that they're going to really pound on him in a way that they did not in 2020 you provoke him and you get more of the kind of conduct that you can point to and say, this man should not be anywhere near the steering wheel of an ice cream truck, let alone the Oval Office. So I think, you know, I think that the dynamics are going to work in favor of, I mean, in, they're going to hurt Donald Trump as he becomes more and more exposed and, and faces more and more pressure from these criminal cases. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And again, the fact that that they are living in a bubble, that Donald Trump's living in a bubble, this reminds me so much, Molly, of 2012, where Mitt Romney and his team watched Fox News and nothing else. They looked at websites that told them they were up by 11 points mm -hmm. in the Gallup poll. They believed until election night uh, in what they were hearing inside that bubble. It's happening again. And whether you're a fascist or a cult member or an insurrectionist or a weirdo or just a freak uh, or just a confused person that has stumbled in the wrong direction, um, that is a bubble that has led to Republicans losing in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So, so, so little idiots over there that say I'm a left winger or something. First of all, I've got a 95% ACU rating. I'm more conservative than any of them. I was part 
of Congress and a big part of the reason, if anybody was around, they'll tell you that we balanced the budget for four years in a row for the first time and the only time in a hundred years. And so when I say all of this and say, wake up, you're in a bubble, I'm saying it as a conservative. And, and these cult members will look at anybody, will look at Liz Cheney, who I think also has a 95% ACU rating, will look at me, will look at George Conway, who liberals hated most of his life, will look at all these other people who gave their lives to the conservative cause that are saying, wake up, wake up, you're going to lose, this guy is a huckster. Well, and they don't listen. Instead, they try to shoot the messenger mm. who's trying to help like them. And thank God, right, because this is this very autocratic vision for America. And, you know, look, we have one party that is not believing right now in the tenets of democracy. Liz Cheney, George Conway, they're doing this because they're worried about American democracy, right? This is no longer about left or right. This is about our system of government versus some other fever, Trumpy fever dream. And so I do, you know, again, I, George and I are friends. We disagree vehemently on many, 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 many things, in, including abortion, which we fight about all the time, and judges, but, uh, in the Supreme Court, but uh, we also <laughs> agree in democracy, right? Do we fight about the Supreme Court all the time? This all is so good. Yeah. Well, this is what it's all about, actually, right here, and this is what is lacking in our discourse, our right. political discourse. So we heard them fighting. Yeah, but the, they fight. And the Republicans, the that's true. They're, and the the Republicans that you named, you know, yeah. their crime in their party is that they spoke their mind. And the problem that we're seeing right yeah. now is you have a lot of people on the media that leans to the right and has that take, is that they are right now cutting down people they're, for speaking their mind. They, don't they are the right. right now cutting down people who speak their mind despite who pays them. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.